everybody in. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Liverpool City Region's Careers Hub. Um, welcome to uh, National Careers Week. We're just letting everybody in, so let's just give it 30 seconds and then we will start today's presentation. If any students joining us can obviously keep their cameras and mics off and please use the chat box. If you've got any questions, we'd love to hear your questions this morning. Um, there's no question that, that can't be asked. And we've got two apprentices joining us as well this morning. So please use the opportunity to speak to apprentices who are currently on their journey. I'm just gonna give it 10 more seconds and then we'll get started. Lovely. So welcome this morning to National Careers Week. We are um, going to be talking to uh, Jacobs Engineering about some fantastic opportunities that they've got available for apprenticeships for students this year. We've also going to be joined by the um, apprenticeship hub team as well for Liverpool City Region. And we're going to just give you a little bit of background around what an apprentice is to make sure that you're obviously fully aware and understand the different levels and, and any further information will be available and after the presentation today and um, on our website and all the information and um, details will be there for you as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Jake Croxton um, from the Apprenticeship Hub team who's going to talk to you all about what an apprenticeship is. Thanks, Jake. Lovely. Thank you very much, Jill. Um, yeah, so thanks for the intro, Jill. Uh, so my name's Jake, and like Jill said, I'm just going to talk to you a bit about apprenticeships, just to explain in a bit more detail what they actually are, the kind of different career paths you can pursue with an apprenticeship, and also just to dispel a few myths that might be out there. Um, so a lot of people tend to think that, you know, going back 10, 20 years ago, that apprenticeships were more for manual labour jobs and they were quite restrictive in what you could actually do as a career. Um, but you might be surprised to find out that there's over 500 different sort of careers you could pursue as an apprentice. Um, and just the next slide, please, Leslie. Ann. So what we do as uh, the apprenticeship support team is we can provide advice and guidance uh, to residents um, aged 14 plus about apprenticeships, but also general career advice as well. And we provide a platform for apprenticeship vacancies. So obviously today we're speaking to Jacobs Engineering who have a few opportunities and have, you know, we're a really well established company. Um, but if there are any sort of other paths that you'd like to pursue that you're interested in, we provide this platform and we bring together a lot of the vacancies across the Liverpool city region if you are that way inclined towards an apprenticeship. Um, and if you do require any additional one-to-one -one support, anything to do with CV building, job applications, we can also support on that, which is obviously a very big part of um, getting into these opportunities. The next slide, please. So what is an apprenticeship? Essentially, an, an apprenticeship is a style of sort of working um, where essentially you earn while you learn. So it is classed as a full-time job, uh, in essence, so you are employed throughout the apprenticeship, but there is a combination between learning as well. So I'll give you an example. For argument's sake, you wanted to do an apprenticeship in engineering. Monday to Thursday, you may go to go to the job, you get trained up, you're getting paid for this as well, and you're getting all of the knowledge, skills and behaviours that you need to be successful in that career. But you're also balancing that with your education as well. So. This is typically around 20% of the time you would be doing your learning. This could be on the job and also off the job at a local sort of educational institute. And as I mentioned, you are going to be earning money whilst you're doing this as well. Next slide, please. So here are some common features of an apprenticeship. So as I mentioned, there are over 500 different types of apprenticeships for people aged 16 plus. Um, this boils down into about 10 or 12 primary, primary industries. Um, it takes me about three hours to go through all of the different things that you could do. But as we'll mention in, a bit further on into the presentation, there's plenty of different sorts of resources you could use to actually see what these opportunities are. So in terms of um, the, the layout of an apprenticeship, as I mentioned, it is like a full-time job and the minimum pay is £4.15 an hour. But what I would say is, I would, I would disregard this, this pay 
per hour. This is quite a common objection where people think, oh, do you know what? I can't work for £4.15 an hour. And that's fair enough if you were looking at it at face value. But what you have to remember is, is when you do an apprenticeship, the employer um, pays for your education to put all of this time, money, effort and resources into moulding you into, your, into their employee, um, their, their ideal employee. And like a job, the minimum pay is just out there as a minimum. Not all apprenticeships pay £4.15 an hour. And I would say that the more technical apprenticeships certainly, uh, you know, typically pay more than that as well. So in terms of apprenticeships, they are they're a minimum of 13 months. But what I would say is you're looking at a minimum, of, you know, typically two to three years. And if you were to go on to a higher degree level apprenticeship, which are a very popular uh, option right now, you might even go up to four, five, six years. So, you know, it is a good chunk of investment, but it's a very good thing to invest your future into. And they are fully funded as well. So there's no cost to the apprentice. So if you think about the route that typically, you know, people go down towards university, £9,000 a year. University might be the best option sometimes for, you know, for specific careers. But again, it's something you just have to weigh up with the time and the money investment. With an apprenticeship, as an apprentice, you're not going to be paying anything towards tuition fees, anything to do with course materials, equipment used. All of this is inclusive on the apprenticeship. So again, when you're making a decision about your future, that's just another element to weigh up versus, uh, you, you know, your more traditional routes such as university or going into full-time work. And you will be working alongside approved training organisations. So this is really important because there is somewhat of a notion about apprenticeships where people in the past may think as an apprentice, you're going to be making cups of tea. And that's just not the case. There's going to be an agreed upon set of um, responsibilities that you would have as an apprentice. And then you would go through milestones throughout the duration of the apprenticeship to build up your experience, build up your confidence. And then hopefully by the end of the apprenticeship, once you get to the endpoint assessment, you're going to be uh, you know, a very capable employee and somebody that can then take in this knowledge and experience that you've got into the rest of your career. So just moving on. So what companies offer apprenticeships? So you might be surprised to find out that um, a lot of the companies that, um, you know, some of the most well-established companies like BBC, Sky, Amazon, are all, are all have big initiatives at the moment to take on apprentices. Now, the reason for that is about five years ago, a lot changed with the apprenticeship levy. So I won't go into this in too much detail, but essentially now companies that earn over a certain amount of money in revenue every year have a pot of money that they must spend every year to take on apprentices. So what this has created is a, a landscape where companies are now a lot more inclined to want to take on the next generation of local talent. So for you guys now being in the position where you may be considering an apprenticeship or you may be at the point where you're thinking about a career, you know, for the rest of your life, it's created some really good opportunities that maybe didn't exist five, 10 years ago. And a lot of the jobs that you may not have done in the past as an apprentice have now been opened up to that route. So, you know, it's a great time of opportunity with over 1.2 million vacancies being on the job market as well. Um, it's not just about university. It's not just about full time work. There are alternative routes now that can get you to the same place. So just the next slide, please. So who was involved in an apprenticeship? So you, the apprentice, is your central to everything. You're taken on by the employer that obviously um, you know, provides you with the knowledge, the skills, behaviour, but you're also with the training provider as well. So this is really important because you're not just left alone with the employer, you're going to have the full backing of the training provider, and this is going to ensure that you're getting the education that's necessary for you to progress in the respective career that you choose. Um, Traditionally, maths and English could be provided at functional skills level. Say, for example, you didn't pass your GCSE. But what I would say is that now the landscape of apprenticeships is so competitive that you really want to be getting your maths and English at first time of asking. If that wasn't the case, there are still opportunities out there. But naturally, the best apprenticeships out there with the, you know, the most progression, um, they're going to want maths and English. So I would really advise trying to get that under your belt if possible. Uh, moving on. So in terms of endpoint assessments, I won't go into this in too much detail, but as I mentioned before, 
when you come towards the end of your time at the apprenticeship, you will have, it may be an exam, it may be a practical assessment, and this is what is going to determine your success of whether you pass the apprenticeship or not. So a bit like when you're in education, you come towards the end of your time, you may have exams, and it's a, it's a similar sort of process with an apprenticeship. Next slide, please. So how much will it cost? It's not going to cost you anything to do an apprenticeship. As I mentioned, you're going to get paid by the employer and also any sort of cost, whether it be tuition, whether it be equipment, are going to be entirely covered. Uh, moving on. So in terms of access and progression, there are different levels of apprenticeships. And I do believe that Jacobs are going to talk about this in a bit more detail, specific to the engineering opportunities. But in a nutshell, there are different levels that you can start on an apprenticeship. And naturally, this can go all the way up to degree and master's level. So if you're somebody with aspirations of taking your education all the way as far as you can go, an apprenticeship could facilitate that in theory. Next slide, please. So with higher degree level apprenticeships, this is something that I just want to touch on in a bit more detail because this is an incredible opportunity that's opened up over the last few years. So if you ask somebody with aspirations to go to university, but you also want to do an apprenticeship and get that practical hands-on experience that's going to offer a gateway into a certain career, in theory, an employer could take you on as an apprentice, but also you'd be going to university at the same time. So this is incredible because although it is very challenging to work full time and also focus on your education, the payback is massive because you could potentially come out with a degree, a master's degree, whilst getting that really important experience. And another thing is a lot of companies will sponsor you to go to university. So the tuition fees that you may have had when you go down the traditional route of university may be covered by the by the company that you're employed by as an apprentice. So in the long run, you could potentially save yourself forty, fifty thousand um, pounds if you were to do a higher degree level apprenticeship. And a lot of higher education institutes are now offering these apprenticeships. So again, massive time for opportunity. And if you're somebody with that high level of aspiration to get a degree, to get a master's degree, it's definitely worth thinking about as an alternative route. Next slide, please. So what should I ask myself? Okay, can I commit to four years if needed? So although that sounds like you know a long amount of time to invest into an apprenticeship, if you go to university, you're looking at a minimum of three years regardless. And if you were to go into a full-time job as opposed to an apprenticeship, the likelihood is it would take you a few years to build up to a level of experience you know, to get to a senior level anyway, or wherever it is you want to go. So an apprenticeship is just going to give you that support and it's going to give you that guidance throughout the process. And with those guaranteed milestones, providing that you stick up to your end of the deal, um, you're going to have a bit more structure. So and like I mentioned, it's also quite challenging to work whilst you're studying. But if, you, if you're somebody that's motivated, determined, and you think you could give that a good go, I would definitely recommend an apprenticeship and give it some thought. Next slide, please. So a lot of these careers, I would say, with the exception of hair and barbering, are careers where in the past you may have needed a degree to get to a certain level. And that might be the case now, but this has opened up massively to degree apprenticeships. So you'll find out a bit more about engineering in this call, 100%. Um, but to join um, organisations such as the police force, now you have to have a degree to get to a certain level. And this is achievable through a degree apprenticeship. So um, I went to an event a few weeks ago and I was speaking to a young lady who was 19, 20. She's joined the police force um, on a seven year apprenticeship. By the time she's finished that seven years, she'd be starting on 43,000 pounds and she'd also have a degree as well. So that's just an example of the different sort of career paths that you could go into as a degree apprentice. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the 500 different apprenticeships that you could do boil down primarily into these industries. Engineering, manufacturing is an incredible industry with a lot of demand. There's a lot of skills in demand for these industries. So that translates into a landscape where um, there's, more, there's more opportunity, jobs are better paid. You know, there's lots of pro progression opportunities as well. Also, the digital sectors, uh, industries such as IT, law, finance, this has massively been opened up by um, the new reforms of apprenticeships. So again, it's not a case of just the construction jobs, which don't get me wrong, it's still amazing for apprenticeships, but the, the, you know, the scope has broadened a lot in the last few years as to what you can do as an apprentice. Next slide, please. 
So where do you look for an apprenticeship? So our website is the b-more.inf, and as I mentioned, this is a local hub that brings together a lot of the opportunities across um, Liverpool City region. Also, the gov.uk uh, search facility is great for the wider part of UK. So our website is based largely on gov.uk, but focused mainly on Liverpool City region. Gov.uk is where you want to make, well, you may want to look there if you're considering opportunities across the UK. So when people go to university, typically at 18, 19, whenever it may be, um, they may consider moving away to a different city. And it's exactly the same for apprenticeships. Those opportunities do exist. Moving on. And this is just uh, an example of the website. So the website, you can do a search function. It will show you uh, exactly what the apprenticeship is, where it's based, how much it's being paid, and what exactly it consists of. Uh, next slide, please. And this is just an example. So you can put in your home postcode. It's going to bring up all of the local apprenticeships in the area. And as I mentioned, it's going to give you a really sort of comprehensive summary of what's out there. So the wages, how long it's going to last, and the, uh, and the qualifications that you've been doing. Just next one, please. So yeah, that's that's about everything in terms of um, you know the introduction to apprenticeships. Our, we do have social media, but our website is the main place to go. And I think that's uh, that's everything. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jake. And that was a really um, interesting and informative introduction this morning to uh, apprenticeships and the different levels um, and courses that obviously that you can consider. Um, so we'll um, obviously keep posting any questions that you've got in the chat function and we'll obviously take some Q&A uh, towards the end of the uh, presentation this morning. So thank you very much, Jake. Um, so without further ado, I am going to um, hand over to Dan from the Jacobs team, who's going to give you a little bit of an insight into what it's like to work at Jacobs and what actually Jacobs do. Um, and then he's then going to hand across to his colleague, Sam, who's going to talk about the apprenticeship opportunities that are currently live. So welcome, Dan, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Jill. Thanks, Jake. Um, good overview, Jake, uh, in terms of one, what an apprentice is. Um, hopefully, the next 10, 15 minutes, we can walk you through what that means to us at Jacobs as, a, as, as an employer, but also, more importantly, speak to actually or listen to a couple of our apprentices who will give you the kind of warts and all. Um, of, of what that means to them. So yeah, I'm Dan. I lead the early careers recruitment team here at Jacobs and we recruit typically around 300 graduates a year and an increasing number of apprentice uh, graduates. So, you know, a couple of years ago, we were recruiting around 20. This year, we're looking at around 80. So it really is a growth area for us as a business. And it's an area that the senior guys in the business are keen for us to do more of. So I think as time goes on, it's going to become as popular a route as, as a graduate. So I think from that perspective, it, it's a good time to be to be considering this as a career option. I've got my colleague Sam with me, who um, knows a lot more about apprentices than I ever will. Um, she's, she's our apprentice guru. So any questions around courses, anything like that, then direct to her. Um, but yeah, let's, let's just crack on. Um, next, next, next slide, please. So yeah, look, um, who are Jacobs? I'm conscious that you, you guys, Jacobs in Liverpool may mean crackers. We, we're certainly not, we are, well, we are crackers, but not those kind of crackers. Um, you know, part of our uh, strap line is challenging today and reinventing tomorrow. And what, what does that mean? It means we work on some of the biggest and most interesting infrastructure projects in the UK and in the world. So our reinventing tomorrow leads into early careers and that really means recruiting the best talent uh, we can at, at that kind of entry level whether that's a graduate coming straight out of university with a good degree or getting an apprentice who can join us and really help us drive that um, that, that problem solving for clients that's essentially what we do i've um, got a couple of projects in a minute which um which i'm sure you'll recognize uh next slide please so yeah, these are just a, just a snapshot of the sectors that we're in. So basically anything infrastructure wise from you know, water, rail, motorways, nuclear power, wind farms, cyber security, digital, building, designing, working with the government on feasibility studies. We're one of those big companies that get involved in a lot of things. So the, 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 there are many, many different career options for you at Jacobs. Next slide. So, you know, HS2, one of the biggest, most high profile projects that we're involved in. Um, you know, 
for those of you that aren't aware, you know, the government is spending literally billions of pounds on a high speed rail from London to the north of England, uh, Leeds and Manchester. Um, and yeah, it is, you know, a massive, massive project that, that is redefining infrastructure in the UK and Jacobs is at the core of it, both from an engineering perspective, we're designing tunnels, helping dig tunnels, but we're also doing the feasibility around the costings, the project management. So not just engineering, different subjects as well and different roles. You, you don't have to be an engineer to have a career at Jacobs. I'm not an engineer and I've had a 13 year career at Jacobs. So, you know, it, there are different careers that, um, that you can have. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, that, 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 there's the kind of the route um, of, of HS2, um, for those of you that, that aren't aware of what it is. Um, next slide, please. So Thames Tideway, and there's been a few BBC documentaries about that, the super sewer, the world, or the, the biggest um, sewer um, going on un, under London, under the River Thames. So dredging the River Thames to put a big, big sewer under it and um, you know, putting a big sewer under the city of London. All the, you know, in terms of infrastructure and complexity, one of the most interesting and fascinating projects, even though it is about poo. Um, it, 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 the engineering feat behind it, the logistical feat behind it, takes some real bright talent. You know, last year we recruited three or four apprentices that went directly onto Thames Tideway. You know, so that our apprentices get involved in these projects. As Jake said, it isn't just sitting around making cups of tea or you know work shadowing. Our apprentices do get involved on these projects directly. They're there in a porter cabin with a hard hat, high vis jacket, walking the round getting involved in these projects. Next slide. So yeah, just, just get, get, give an overview. Con conscious of time and these things work better if you guys have got questions. So, you know, we'll just rattle through these projects just to give you an idea of what it is we do. Um, yeah, next slide. Yeah, Lower Thames Crossing, again, another high profile, big infrastructure project for us, um, you know, Again, putting another tunnel under the River Thames and sticking a motorway in there, you know, to relieve the, the infrastructure project in London. And these projects aren't just done out of London, they're done UK wide, especially in the last two years with virtual working. You know, it, it, it isn't, you know, we've got people in Manchester working on these projects, we've got people in Warrington, you know, it, these projects spread, they're so big, they spread across all our UK offices. Uh, next slide. Yes. Yeah, the map I'll give you an overview of that uh next, next slide please guys yep look and here is it, it, an example of some of the roles that we do so you know top top left engineering yeah we do engineering we're famous for engineering but we also have other roles economists business analysts mathematicians software developers graphic designers you know project controls risk hr people you know we, we have a full range of different apprenticeships and uh, different people working on these projects and working for Jacobs. It isn't just engineers, it is the full range. Can't stress that enough. Anything or anybody with a STEM background, you know, even geography, you know, we recruit geography is one of our biggest disciplines we recruit from, which isn't, you know, as STEM as some others. So, you know, th there are roles for pretty much everybody at Jacobs. Uh, next slide. And yeah, just, just to stress as well, you know, we're not just looking for that maths, STEAM, geography background, you know, part of our recruitment, part of the process we have for recruitment is based around personality. It's based around you as a person. We're recruiting an individual, not just a, 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 a apprentice. We, we, we want an individual, we want a human being. And, you know, a lot of what we do is trying to stress that, you know, people are our greatest asset. You know, we have a culture of caring at Jacobs, which, you know, sits around all of us as employees and, and that's really you know can't stress that enough that you know a large part of the recruitment process isn't just testing your ability to do maths or geography or whatever it is around finding out about you as a person so please but don't be put off by um you know thinking it, it, it's all very transactional we do have you know two-thirds of the recruitment process is around about finding about you and your, indi and your individuality and your personality so We'll get you know, we'll have a discussion about that later if you want. So yeah, now I'll hand over to Sam, my colleague, who will walk you through um, the next few slides and what, what an apprentice means at Jacobs.
Thank you, Dan. Um, hello, everybody. Good morning. So I'm Sam Turnbull. I'm, I'm involved or responsible for the UK um, apprenticeship programme for Jacobs. So we have apprentices um, all over the UK. So in England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland. Um, and we have offices throughout the whole of, um, of the UK as well. Um, we are an actual, we're an American um, owned organisation and have um, staff worldwide. Um, but um, what we're going to talk about today is obviously the apprenticeship opportunities um, in the UK. Um, I think there's some additional text if you click on with that slide, please, that we can. Yeah, if you want to click another couple of times and we'll just have a look. So this slide here, um, it just emphasises really about um, apprenticeships um, being a career choice. So um, I know a lot of people and, and, and sort of many years ago, or there was a period of a few years ago where the thoughts were that, you know, the only way to become successful um, was to um, do your A-levels, go to university and then get a job. As Jake's explained um, previously, the um, you know that the, the, the sh there's a shift now um, in the thought process um, within industry in that um, you know start an apprenticeship straight from school, get your qualifications, and progress that way. And these are just some famous people that you'll have all heard about um, that were apprentices um, and have gone on, as you can see, to be um, very very successful. I think another one from my memory to throw into the pot there is um, Richard Branson. I believe he actually left school with um, without qualifications. Um, that wouldn't be our um, recommendation nowadays because to get onto an apprenticeship, we do really need at least your maths and English so that can support you with your learning. But it just goes to show that if you're uh, passionate about what you're going to do in your job, um, you know, you can be successful. And an apprenticeship nowadays is just a way to support you to continue your knowledge and education alongside um, learning the skills um, you need to do to actually do your job and to progress throughout your career. Um, so if we have next slide, please. Um, this is um, a little bit of a duplication as to what Jake's um, spoken about, but just to reiterate a few of the main um, benefits of what an apprenticeship is or what it is to be an apprentice. Um, as Jake has said, it, you, you get that practical work experience. So I know you'll probably have heard stories of people that go through the education system as in complete a degree or complete um, you know, higher ed and further education. But then they struggle to get a job because they haven't got work experience. So with an apprenticeship, you're getting that experience so that that isn't a barrier to you then getting full time employment at the end of your apprenticeship. Um, you gain your qualifications, as Jake mentioned as well. You are working full time. But when we say full time, at least one day or an equivalent of one day a week, you will be paid to study. So as well as you not having to pay to do your education or to continue your education or complete your degree, you'll be getting paid to do it as well. So it's a huge double whammy in that respect. Um, depending on which apprenticeship you're on, will determine um, what that um, learning looks like or what that period of learning looks like. Some of our apprentices, typically some of the engineering level three apprentices, um, will actually go to the Technical Training Centre for the first academic year of their um, typically four year apprenticeship with us. So you'll be full, uh, full time um, at a training centre learning all of the practical engineering skills. Um, some of the other apprenticeships, they may be on a day a week. So the degree apprentices typically are a one day um, release a week, or some of them may be block release where that would mean um, say so every five weeks you would go to the um, university or training provider or learning establishment for a block of a week and then return to work for another four to five weeks, putting that learning into practice, go back into the college or university, etc., do a bit more learning, come back. And that's basically the pattern um, of your um, learning and, and, and learning on the job and study throughout the period of your apprenticeship. You'll be paid throughout, as we've said. The skills that you learn, once you've completed your apprenticeship, you will have skills, you will have proved yourself, you'll have work experience, you'll have qualifications, 
And many of those skills that you learn may be transferable. So you might want to sidestep and, and, and look at something different or something different within Jacobs. Um, Jacobs ourselves as an organisation, um, we are very passionate about what we refer to as agile careers. So it's all about having a workforce that isn't pigeonholed into having one skill um, as a job. Um, and, um, you know, beyond your apprenticeship, you know, Jacobs particularly will, will support you to learn additional skills and knowledge so you can be more flexible within our business, which is, a, I think, is a great opportunity. Um, it says they're routing to full time employment. Absolutely. As a Jacobs apprentice, however, you will be employed as a full time employee right from the get go. Um, so there's none of this or will I have a job at the end of it? You absolutely will. We're very committed to our apprenticeships. We take our apprentices on because we recognise that there is a gap in that area of our business in, with those particular skills and knowledge, whatever it might be with the um, full intention of keeping you on at the end of it um, and um, progressing you through through the business. That does, however, depend on your performance as it would any other full-time employee. So just because it's a guarantee doesn't mean to say that we don't expect your full commitment, hard work, um, you know, to, to support you to progress. But the more you put into it, um, the more you'll get out of it, especially with a career with Jacobs. And then if you did join us as a level three apprentice or a level two apprentice, then we do support our staff to further educate and progress. So you could go from a level three apprenticeship, then onto a degree apprenticeship. Or if you didn't want to think you wanted to go that far, you might want to do a little bit more and just do a level four and just take it at your pace. Uh, and we'll support you throughout your career and throughout your um educational uh, progression throughout your career. Next slide, please. So we touched a little bit about um, the different levels of apprenticeships. This is just going into that a little bit more deeply. Um, level two apprentices, we, we tend not to take level two apprentices um, as a business. That doesn't mean to say there won't be any opportunities, uh, but hence why I've started this at a level three. So as a level three apprentice, you would start with us um, uh, with GCSEs. So it's straight after your GCSEs. To embark on an engineering level three apprenticeship, we would be looking at five GCSEs typically, maths and English included um, at your grades four to nine, preferably a science subject as well. Um, but as Jake said, there is a lot of competition for apprenticeships out there, as you can appreciate, because you're earning, you're learning, you're getting a career. Um, so, the, the, you know, now is the time for those of you that are taking your GCSEs and your A-levels when we come on to the level sixes. Now is the time to, you know, really get that revision in, really step up your game, really try and get those grades to the best of your ability um, just to stand you in good stead. I know it's, you know, I was at school once, believe it or not. Uh, and I know when it came to taking GCSEs, it was like, oh, exams, you know, or assessments. But, you know, it's not until you get to my age that you realise that, you know, this period of your life now is, is critical. Um, you know, it's really important that you get that work in and, you know, you, you do your best. We can all only do our best, but the better those grades come in at, then obviously that might just give you that little bit of a tweak. Um, in, in your application standing out. Um, however, as Dan said, it's not just the qualifications we look for. We do look for other skills, um, personalities, et cetera. And um, as regards to what you put on your CV, I think we've got a, um, a little bit later on that Dan will talk you through as well. So the level threes for the engineering, as I say, it's typically the five GCSEs we'll look for. We don't just employ engineers, as Dan said, um, for an, some, um, a white collar worker, as we would call it, business admin, um, typically, we'd be looking for, again, the maths and English, um, and they typically be over no more than two years. Um, moving on then, so from a level four up, you, you have to have A levels or equivalent to embark on an apprenticeship at a level four or above level. So when I say or 
or equivalent, it might be that you're considering going on to college to do a BTEC level three, perhaps in engineering, that's your equivalent to your A-levels. Um, so they can be considered um, and level fours to level six. So typically at Jacobs, we'll take level three apprentices and we'll then in invest in a an XA level or BTEC student and take you straight in at a level six. So that means you're starting a level six apprenticeship uh, and you're working towards your degree. Um, now that will typically take uh, five to six years, depending on the degree. So if you were to go to university, you would get your degree within three years, but that's full time. Um, so obviously you're working full time and you're doing your um, degree part time, hence why that period of time to attain that degree is a little bit longer, but you're only studying one, one day a week and then um, several hours in your own time at home. So, you know, years ago, an apprenticeship was an alternative to an academic career route. Um, more and more nowadays, businesses and industry are realising that, if anything, apprenticeships potentially, depending on what career you go into, can be a more rounded way to achieve your degree um, and get on that ladder for your career. Um, and, and it is hard work. Please don't think, oh, I'll just get a job and do an apprenticeship. You are studying. You are working full time. You are learning how to behave in the workplace for the first time for many of you. Um, and it is a commitment, but we are there to support you. And so is your training provider to help you achieve your outcome. Um, as regards to, um, we're to um, apprenticeship opportunities with Jacobs. Um, we are currently in the process of uh, gathering in all of the apprenticeship requirements from, um, from our business, um, as I say, from around the UK, um, and they are in the process um, now and over the next few weeks of being loaded up onto our own careers website um, or careers page within our website. So please, there's the, the link there uh, for you to, uh, to jump on and have a look and see what we have got available. Um, you can also, as um, Jake has mentioned, you can go onto the government website and search for apprenticeships. All apprenticeships available will be listed there. Um, and when you get these slides after, if you want to jump onto the recording, I believe these will be available. If you're not sure what you want to do and if Jacobs isn't for you, you know, we get that. Um, there's, a, there's a link there to the Institute for Apprenticeships. Uh, and that you could just put in a subject in there as a search and it will bring up some different apprenticeships that might be available. Um, as Jake said, there's hundreds available out there and that might just help you home in on something you want to search for on the government website uh, as, as a career option. So just lots of different um, links and things that we're all giving you today to help you um, try and establish what it is you might want to do. Next slide, please. So we mentioned a little bit about Jacobs and the size of our apprenticeship, um, you know, um, project that we've got. So currently we've got around 320 apprentices on programme within Jacobs across the whole of the UK. Um, they're located at approximately, I say approximately because we're growing all the time and, and, and the tide is shifting all the time, but it's around 28 different locations throughout the, loca the UK, some of which Dan had mentioned that are local to yourselves. That are on the call today. Um, you're all assigned a line manager, you'll get a business coach or an assessor that is from the training provider to support you and we have our own learning and development department that are always here to, to, to jump in and help out where necessary. So lots and lots of support. Um, we mentioned about engineering, we've mentioned some different subjects, I've just mentioned a few more there. So digital and cyber as you can imagine is a huge growth area throughout the whole of the UK in all industries so that's something that we're looking in to um, taking on apprentices in um, and then you know welding maintenance if you're a really really hands-on person um, you know there's, there's lots of different um, qualifications that we take apprentices um, on and in total we have around 50 different subject stroke levels of apprentices on programme so as you can see too many to list here but on the right there, you can see pictorially, we, we've listed a lot more um, other apprenticeship opportunities that, that we might have here at Jacobs. Next slide. 
So um, Jacobs as an organisation, just a couple of slides here, just to talk through our um, equality piece with, within Jacobs. Um, we have an extremely diverse workforce. We, we employ people um, based on their abilities. Um, we, we are working with the recruitment team, um, you know, to, to give all um, applicants the opportunity for interview, um, recruit, train and advance, in black, uh, advance black employees based on merit. So as I say, everything is due to merit, whether, you know, regardless of your, your race, colour, um, sexual orientation, we're a very, very friendly organisation. We're here to support you as an individual and listen to you as an individual um, and give everybody the same career um, advancement opportunities um, and initial employment opportunities. Um, so please don't think, oh, I can't do that because whatever that might be from historically, that is not the case with Jacobs. Please, please, if, if it's something you think you might be interested in, please get in touch, please apply, uh, and we're there to support you, um, you know, launch your career, um, the launch pad for your career. Uh, next slide, please. As I say, um, the uh, advancing justice and equality um, within Jacobs, there's symbolic points there, I'll let you read through, I won't read through them all. Um, as an organisation, taking on new apprentices, taking on new employees, everyone is treated equally. We're really, really keen to increase um, and, and level out the number of um, black employees and female employees throughout Jacobs. There's huge programmes to get, um, get you all on board within Jacobs. Um, but not just from a recruitment point of view, once you're with Jacobs, as I say, um, you know, it's equal opportunities for all, um, and you'll, you'll, you will find uh, we are a very, very diverse uh, group of people all working together to, um, um, you know, achieve the same aims for the business. Okay, so I think that's about it from me. Next slide, please. Um, next, um, what I'm going to do is ask uh, one of our first year civil engineering uh, level six degree apprentices, Daniel, um, to um, talk about his experience with Jacob so far, um, why he decided to go down the apprentice route as opposed to um, going on to university. And uh, I'll stop muffling and I'll, uh, I'll hand over to Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Sam. Uh, morning, everyone. My name is Daniel Kameri. I'm in my first year of uh, civil engineering uh, level six degree apprenticeship. And uh, just a, a quick through of how uh, my journey has been uh, till where I am. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so uh, at GCSEs at year 11, that's when I first heard about uh, uh, apprenticeships. And uh, I really wasn't sure, uh, or I did not have enough information to, uh, to actually stand by going by, uh, an apprenticeship. So I decided uh, to go to a level so that I can have a uh, a better understanding of apprenticeship. And also uh, I went through the A-level uh, route because uh, I wanted to be sure that uh, civil engineering is what I wanted to do uh, because uh, I did not have other knowledge of um, other uh, uh, engineering uh, sort of like careers. Uh, and uh, if we move on to the next slide, um, there are four main uh, in engineering uh, careers. Uh, the first picture is the civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical, and uh, chemical. Uh, but out of this alone, uh, there are way, way more uh, other uh, engineering uh, careers. And so I wanted to uh, feed uh, myself with knowledge so that when I choose uh, civil engineering, I know for sure that that is what I wanted to do. And so during my A-level period, uh, uh, I did my research and uh, I was sure that I wanted to do uh, civil engineering and hence uh, my uh, up, uh, applying for apprenticeship. Uh, next slide, please. So um, obviously there is the old way and the new way. Uh, the old way, uh, as you all know, is uh, university and apprenticeship and the new way is apprenticeship. Um, I would say uh, from my own perspective, apprenticeship uh, are two ways definitely uh, 
university because of its um, uh, ad advantages. And as you've heard from uh, uh, Jake and Sam, uh, it has tons and tons of uh, uh, advantages uh, to it. And so uh, my interest in, uh, uh, yeah, so I basically just went for a friendship straight away uh, because one of the, uh, of the reason was I was okay at a school I used to do well. However, I had other uh, places or other sectors that I was really strong at, such as uh, public speaking or um, uh, communicating well with people, networking well with people. All these, I would not be able to show them uh, when I go to university. So for example, I would not be able to really excel um, sort of like uh, in showing my communication skills or networking skills when I go to university. However, uh, going to uh, the apprenticeship route, I can uh, showcase my networking skills, my punctuality skills and uh, uh, working well under pressure and every, every other thing that does not really relate to um, books or I cannot show on a piece of paper. Uh, so yeah, that was... Uh, uh, another reason why I chose uh, a friendship. Next slide, please. So um, I know uh, uh, Jake and uh, Sam have really emphasized on the um, benefits of our friendship, but uh, personally, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I do experience um, uh, some of the uh, advantages of being an apprentice. And uh, on the screen is just four that I would like to talk about. The first one on the top left is uh, you actually get to see what you design or if that, that is if you choose to go on a uh, engineering uh, apprenticeship or a career path. Uh, for example, I've been involved on, a, on two projects and uh, I have been in the design stage and uh, during construction, I've, I've also been able to see um, the construction stage. So you get a sort of... Um, sort of job satisfaction, I think that's the word, uh, to see uh, the thing that you've been working for, uh, at, uh, the project you've been working um, is coming to uh, a, a reality and that is uh, very, very interesting. The second uh, one on the top right is um, career growth really. Um, there is no better way to be who you want to be than to hang out or to hang around people who have already achieved what, um, uh, or where you want to be. And so being an apprentice is, um, yeah, you, you, you hang out with, uh, in the office, you hang out with um, uh, senior engineers, uh, project managers, all uh, these people who uh, you look up to and you're like, wow, they're doing, that they're doing great stuff. I would like to be as fluent as uh, this person. I would like to be as organized as the way. I would like to have as much knowledge as uh, this uh, senior engineer has. And so there is honestly no better way. Um, well, unlike in university, um, there isn't really that. It's just your lecturer, um, yes, uh, who is really the most knowledgeable person, you know, so yes. Uh, and uh, on the bottom left is the you and where you learn. Now this is uh, very important. I, I, I'll say, uh, be, yeah, and uh, it's a very uh, nice advantage because um, obviously there is no student loan, and you get to sort of enjoy your money and uh, uh, and manage your money, and um, so it's uh, it, it, it's very it's very um, beneficial. And you, you'll get to enjoy the reality of it once you start uh, um, um, your, your apprenticeship. And the, th and the fourth one is um, skills. And this is very important because uh, the amount of growth you experience as an apprentice is enormous. Like, uh, and it, it's not really pressure, but you just tend to, uh, slowly, step by step, um, uh, fill in the shoes. Uh, for example, um, I, I would say I was an okay when it came to communicating when I was in a sixth form, 
But uh, uh, when I came uh, to, when I started my apprenticeship and uh, started meeting people in the office, my networking skills broaden. And uh, nowadays I'm always okay to ask questions, lift up my hand when I have uh, uh, anything to say or a question uh, to, uh, um, to ask. And so um, you grow in uh, not only as an engineer, but also as a person. Uh, you get to appreciate other people's ideas and uh, how uh, how to relate to people in general. So, yeah, that's that's um, um yeah. And uh, just to add one more is uh, as we move on to the next slide is um, progression uh, really. Uh, when you're in uni or, or my friends in uni, we their goal is to become sort of like a civil engineer. Uh, they pretty much don't know what's next after you become a, a, a civil engineer, really. Um, while as an apprentice, you get to sort of, you, you are in full-time employment. So you are, uh, for example, I'm a bridge um, uh, engineer apprentice. And so uh, I have, uh, in, in, in the team, we have senior engineers, we have principal engineers, project managers. And so uh, there are various sort of like uh, roles in uh, in the occupation. And so it's not just, you, you just become a civil engineer and uh, that's it. Uh, there is no really more goals to it. Uh, so yeah, you, you get to really see um, who you would really like to be uh, in the in the long run. Um, and I think that's for me, really. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Daniel. That's fantastic. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, Daniel. That's uh, that's really good. I think we've got a few questions. So uh, I think we're going to hand over to uh, Mia next, please. Mia, who's our third year business um, administration apprentice, and she can tell you about her journey with Jacobs. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Sam. Um, hi everyone, so my name is Mia Goodenough and I'm a business administrator apprentice. Um, I'm based in the Stockton office and I've been an apprentice ever since I left school. Um, I started off as a horse equine apprentice and I did that for a year and I got that qualification. And then I came to Jacobs and took on the business admin role for the past two and a half years. Um, and I really, really do enjoy it. I've been, um, I'm really happy that I took on the uh, apprenticeship route. And that is just because um, it's helped my development. It's helped my communication skills. It's helped my confidence. And my confidence is a big one because when I first started with Jacobs, I was really, really nervous. I was scared to speak to people and just things like that. And it's really helped me just because you speak to new people every day, you shadow people. Yeah, you meet loads of new people and meetings and things like that. And yeah, you get the opportunity to do um, presentations like this, which does really help with your confidence. Um, so yeah, um, the achievements I've had since I've came to Jacobs is um, I got the opportunity to take on the Jacobs Career Network lead, which also is really good for my confidence because I speak to new apprentices every day to help them out. Um, I've also um, become a mental health ambassador as well. So that's um, a really rewarding one, speaking to people all the time. And I've also became the STEM lead of the Stockton office. So I do a lot of STEM work, which is science, technology, engineering and maths. So recently I went into a primary school and I um, spoke about inspiring girls into, into, into engineering which I was trying to portray how you don't have to be a boy to be an engineer. You can be anything you want to be, um, no matter your gender. I've also done um, career fairs as well um, with many students from different colleges and things like that. Um, and yeah, so I'm not an engineer, but part of my job role is helping the engineer, engineers out. Um, so I would make sure their timesheets are done by the end of the week. I would book meeting, meeting rooms for them. Um, I would make sure their travel is booked and everything like that, speaking to them every day, making sure they're okay. Um, so yeah, I've just completed my level two um, business admin qualification and I'll be going on to my level three qualification. 
in business administration. Um, and in the future, one thing that I'd really like to do is project planning as well. Um, so just because I'm not an engineer, engineer now doesn't mean I can't be one in the future because Jacobs has so many opportunities. But yeah, I really enjoy working for Jacobs and being an apprentice. Yeah, thank you. On mute. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Brilliant. Yeah, and uh, you're, um, you know, you, you're a credit to, to Jacob yourself. I know you work very hard for us, and, and as I say, you're looking to progress your career. So, uh, very, very well done. Um, Jill, um, I'm just a little bit conscious of time. Have we got time to go through um, the next part of the presentation where we talk about our recruitment piece? Yeah, yeah, just, just carry on. If people carry want to walk off, they can, and we're obviously the recording's there for everybody. So, Oh, OK, super. Thank you. I think the next piece is regarding the recruitment bit, so I'll hand back over to uh, to Dan. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, thanks, guys. Some, uh, some, some interesting stories. I think, yeah, you can kind of see the difference of different careers, different personalities, different people, and that's kind of what we're trying to get that message across. That there's all different types of roles, different types of people at Jacobs. So, yeah, look, in, ter in terms of the business end of things, how do you get a job at Jacobs? I guess is, is the real kind of business end of why you're here. Um, our apprentice roles went live like now, uh, Friday and Monday this week. Um, my admin team have been hurriedly putting them all up. So most of them are there now. Um, conscious of, 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 of locations, I think we're still waiting for a, 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 the ones from Warrington to come through. So if you look on there now, I think there's one for Warrington and half a dozen for Manchester, but there are more coming for Warrington. So don't, don't be put off if you log on after this meeting and there's only one for Warrington. But yeah, the process is adverts live now. Uh, we'll screen applications at the end of March, early April. Then we'll invite you to do our virtual assessment, which involves recording yourself on your phone, um, answering four very generic questions that aren't related to anything other than just wanting to find more about yourself. I won't give too much away for this year's questions, but last year, one of the questions was, if you had a time machine, what would you do with it? So as you can see, we're more interested in you rather than you know, tell us about your A-level maths and all that kind of stuff. So you know, the other part of it is some gamified testing where we ask you to play a load of games online and that gives us some feedback and some answers around um, you know, how you process information and how uh, agile your learning is. That, again, I can't kind of stress enough, that's as important to us as any qualifications. So yeah, then offers are made in July, June, July. Hopefully by August you've signed on the dotted line and you're uh, joining. So yeah, starting in September, and then when Sam takes over, um, we do hand all our pencils over to Sam in September, and they all start and um, yeah, start your career with Jacobs. Uh, next slide, please. So application tips. So again, this, this is what, this, what you're here for. Um, your CV, you know, we're very conscious that you're at the very start of your career, so your CV isn't exactly going to be four pages long, quite the opposite. You know, it should just be one page, two page max. And I've been working 20 years. If I can get mine down into a page and a half, two pages, we, I'd expect you guys to be able to do the same. Um, and it's really just trying to put on there what who you are and what what, what kind of thing you've, um, you, you, you're you looking for. You know, ask for help for writing your CV. It's not easy writing about yourself, but at the same time, once you have written it, get somebody else to proofread it, get somebody else to spell check it. There's really, you know, as many, many eyes as you can get on it, will we'll make it a better document. I guess from a, you know, from our side of the fence, a lot of what our, you know, like, like Daniel and, and, and me, a lot of what they're doing is producing written reports or reviewing written reports. So the quality of your CV is probably the first written report you'll write, you know, for Jacobs to see. So. You know, it, it is an important document in that, that if it's you know, poorly laid out, if there's spelling mistakes, if it makes no sense, then realistically, it's not a, it's not a good start. So, you know, get somebody else to read it. Google is your friend. It really is. You know, don't be lazy and just jot something down and flick it out. Spend some time researching on Google, asking people to look at it. Um, covering letter, similar kind of thing, really. You know, make it tailored to the role you're applying for, the sector you're applying for. You know, people say, what, you know, what, what, what are the best candidates? The best candidates that we've seen really are the ones that have got a passion for what they do. You're going to spend four, the next 40 years doing this. So if you don't enjoy it and it's not a passion, it's going to be a long, old career. 
I know a lot of our guys, as Daniel will tell you, you know, I, I used to work with the bridge team. You know, a lot of the bridge guys, they've got a genuine interest in bridges. You know, it, 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 it's that level of passion, that level of interest that really sets Jacob's employees aside from, from a lot of others. So, you know, if you start getting that across, you know, if you've got you know, spare time, if you do various different things, whatever it is, if it's origami, if it's you know, working on car engines, whatever it is, whatever interest you've got, stick it on there. Make, make yourself stand out. Um, yeah. Right. Next slide, please. So, yeah, um, you know, just in, in a bit more detail, I, will, I, will, I won't read that through. Once there's a link down there that can help you, but, you know, just make it look good. You know, we see literally thousands of CVs. Ones that stand out do stand out and, and, and do get picked. You know, uh, just as an aside, you know, every every architect that sends us a CV, their CVs are works of art. They really are. And, you know, again, have a look on Google. See what good ones look like. PDF it. You know, I'm of an age uh, where, you know, when I, when I left school, you'd print it on posh paper and hand it out. PDF in it is the, is the modern equivalent of doing that. You know, PDF it, put some, you know, make it colourful, make it stand out. And yeah, there you go. There's the tip of the day. Um, conscious of time, conscious of some questions. So I don't know if you want to jump into those and get stuck in, I guess. Yes. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, we have got some questions. Um, just firstly, um, really appreciate you all coming along today. And it's been great to obviously hear from Mir and, and Daniel as well this morning. And um, we have got some questions. So um, I think we'll start off with, um, I think I answered one in the chat, but I think one of the first key things is that um, is closing dates for applications. And I've just put in there around students need to, if they're really keen and interested, to get their applications in as soon as they yeah. can don't wait for the dates because sometimes I presume you're the same, you get so many applications, you might close them early. Yeah, that's what we when we've got enough good candidates, we'll close it. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't keep it open for the sake of it. We, you know, we'll, we review it, if not every day, every couple of days. And the minute we've got, um, you know, enough good candidates, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll close it and run with what we've got. So you know, don't waste time, get stuck in, get applying and yeah, go for it. Yeah, and certainly on the timelines that you've said as well, for any students that are looking at um, covering GCSEs this summer and A-levels obviously start to look at them now, start to get a plan as well. And, and that's, not, that's just not a Jacob's thing. That's, that's you know, the Generally. thing that Jake, Jake yeah. put up there at the start. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a defined calendar for graduates. Yeah. It, it's the autumn for, for apprentices. It's the spring. You know, that's not, that's not just a Jacob's thing. That's a, a, a UK thing. All the big companies that are recruiting apprentices will be looking now. So... Yeah, I presume that, like you've said as well, there's going to be quite a number of different apprenticeships in different uh, areas of Jacobs. So again, there's lots of different um, opportunities going to be available for students to, to consider based on, like you said, what the passion is and what they're really, really interested in looking at as well. Yeah. yeah I was just going to jump in there and add a little bit, if, if that's OK. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I know we've got a timeline that says we're, we're applying, you know, we want applications now for this particular role. Um, you know, uh, all the will in the world, we'd like all of our um, apprenticeship opportunities to be uh, done, dusted, filled and um, job offers going out by, you know, June, July time. But we know from experience, um, managers will come to us a bit late in the day and say, oh, sorry, I forgot to put my application or my vacancy out in March. Um, it's now the end of June, beginning of July. I've just decided I want an apprentice. So um, I think the message really is just to keep looking on the website. If there's, a, if there's a vacancy there that's open, it means we are still recruiting. So, you know, just, just keep looking, keep hoping, keep applying. Um, and as regards to the fact that, yes, you're doing your GCSEs now and you haven't got your grades, um, we are still recruiting, interviewing, making job offers, but it may be that that job offer is um, conditional on the basis of you achieving those particular grades in GCSEs or A-levels, particularly A-levels because the universities have the same rules for apprentices for uh, registering their uh, degree apprentices as they do to go on to a degree course. So depending on whereabouts you are and what university that degree apprenticeship will be starting at, there will be a criteria that we, we, we have no control over at Jacobs to a degree. It is down to the individual university. Um, so off, jobs that are offered may be conditional on the basis of reaching their minimum entry criteria. Great. 
And, and there's just a question there, Dan, just before we, we pick up with uh, Daniel and Mia, just around, um, can students actually practice any of the tests, any aptitude tests that, that they're going to be given? Is there any kind of example um, that they can find on your website? We, we, we don't. Um, but again, it, it's not like they need practice. It's not like a maths test. It, yeah. it is simply, you know, the, the, it's playing games. It, it's, you know, and some of them are your ability to, to adapt to, to new information and yeah. all that. So... Okay. No, and, and I think for the conversation we've had previously that the, you mentioned around um, sending a video in around the, the questions that you're going to ask, presumably that students would be would get those questions and will be able to practice, re-record and only actually submit once they're happy with their. Action. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's so, yeah, there's, there's, there's a whole page of explanations around submitting that that, that yeah. solo interview. It, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a window into you. It's making your yeah. CV more three and four dimensional and you know you don't click submit so you're happy with what, what you've put down but but again you know what we see we, we, we can actually see how many time, times people have um have had a go at it and again most people do it you know one one or two takes and maybe our generation would probably take us 30 takes to get it right yeah. but you know, the young <laughs> guys these days they're just comfortable just, just speaking like this and rolling with it so yeah you know, but yeah, we're not asking again. It's it's not a test. It, we're not asking for anything other than just tell us more about yourself. That's it. Personality, That's isn't it? A trick Get question. That's it. You know, yeah. it's not. You know, Dan Daniel have been through it. Me has been through it. You know, we've all been through it. it, it it's it's not a, again. You know. Yeah. You know, ask, ask, ask Daniel, I guess. He, yeah, he, well, yeah. well, there's a great question that leads on to that, Daniel, um, if I could ask you, just around how did you actually find the recruitment process? So actually going through the um, the, the testing. Um, actually, like, like uh, Dana said, it's, it's not hard. It's not like a maths um, uh, exam or anything. It, um, uh, I went through um, uh, 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 many sort of like uh, I applied for various apprenticeships and uh, uh, I did uh, exam tests related to maths, uh, engineering, and everything. Uh, yeah, but I wouldn't say it was anything hard. And also when it came to the interview as well, I think that was uh, that was the one that I felt like I really needed to nail it, and, and I did. Uh, uh, and it was just about uh, the um, I was asked questions that relate to me as a person, what I have done, what I have learned, and so it's sort of like it's being me. I just have to be, uh, yeah. And from there, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's really useful, and I think that's it, isn't it? It's about getting yourself across and um, your personality, the skills that you've developed while you've been at school and college as well. Um, and I know that you, you you mentioned earlier, you talked a lot about the things that you really wanted to um, in, improve on um, and learn um, while you're obviously on the job, which, you know, is, 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 is a great, is a great, um, you know, thing for students to think about, which is, you know, what, what having an apprenticeship is all about. So yeah, that came across really, really well. So thank you for that. Um, I was just going to add a little bit to that. Sorry, um, Jill. Um, I can understand where the, some of the questions are coming from regarding, you know, can we practice? Is it maths? Is it this? Is it that? Um, I know a lot of the training providers, uh, engineering training providers that specialise in um, recruiting engineer, um, engineering apprentices, they have um, countrywide, actually, they have a, a pretty similar um, application process the likes of you know the Jaguar Land Rovers and the BMWs are all thrown into that mix but but the local training providers as well where they'll do a maths um, test a communications test and a spatial awareness test which have you know pass or fail rates um, and Daniel mentioned he did some sort of maths test yeah. he, he probably did some of those and you know um, but at Jacobs we don't follow that traditional route so depending on where they apply um, some of the training providers might get them to do those sorts of tests, but we as Jacobs, as Dan has explained, we, we just do it a little bit different. So that may, might be where, you know, some of that confusion or, or, or those questions have come from. That's great. Thank you for the, uh, for the information. And, and just finally, Mia, could I just ask you a question? And just picking up on something that you mentioned around, um, you've started at Jacobs and you're doing business admin and now you're thinking about project management. Do you, do you think that you would have thought about going into project management if you hadn't have sort of gone down this apprenticeship route? 
and has it opened your eyes in terms of the, the different opportunities that 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 Jacobs could offer you and sort of maybe changing slightly your career aspirations as you as you as you're moving forward? Yes, definitely. Um, I didn't think I'd be the person that'd be able to go down the project management route until I had the talk with my manager. She said, um, you could be an engineer, you could do this and loads of different things that I didn't even think I'd be able to do um, when we have our like E3 catch ups and meetings and things. So it's really, really good all the opportunities out there that um, Jacobs provide, which I didn't even know about. Yeah. No, definitely. And I think um, I think both you and Daniel um, have both spoken about developing um, and improving your confidence levels and um, your skills, mm -hmm. your communication skills. You've both come on here today, which, you know, for a lot of young students, um, you know, is, 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 is a big thing. So, um, yeah, it's been it's yeah. been really great to have you both with us this morning. And I hope you've got something out of it as well as, as our students who, who obviously have been on this morning, but also who will who will pick up the pre-recording afterwards as well. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. And um, just really finally, just to, to wrap up the session today, just want to thank um, Jake from the Apprenticeship Hub and all the team from Jacobs today for coming on and sharing the insights. And um, please pick up the recording that will be on our website, which is on growthplatform.org. We will provide the recording plus all of the presentations today. And we'll also keep sharing any further information as well across our, um, our social media sites. Um, please log on to Jacob's Careers, check out over the coming days and weeks opportunities and please, please get your applications in as soon as possible. If we've got any students that would like some more information or ideally maybe to talk around an element of the application, then I know that Dan and the team um, would be happy to, to pick up any, any questions and queries. You can send them through to the careers hub at growthplatform.org or obviously try and pick us up on social media. So um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, and uh, and have a have have a really great day. Thank you.